Hi everyone, it's good to be with you. Today we're looking at part three of our series, Awaken to Your Purpose. And today's topic is, you were created to do good works. Let's have a prayer and get right into it. Dear God in heaven, thank you that you've got a purpose and a plan for our lives. Thank you that we're created to do good works. I pray that you'd speak to each one of us about this today in the way that we need to hear from you most. I pray that you'd encourage us and uplift us and give us good ideas and motivation. Give us your spirit's power. Give us refreshing and restoration. And I pray that you'd open up a good future for everybody who's listening to this in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know about you, but I can remember being a kid and having the terrible realization that one day, I was going to have to work for a living. I remember just thinking, what? You mean that mum and dad aren't going to just buy me everything for the rest of my life? That if I want to have a house that I'm going to have to get a job and work and work hard and, you know, put food on the table myself? What if I don't feel like it on a given day? What do I do then? Won't the government just give me money? And I found out not if you want to have all the things that you want to have, I'm going to have to work. And, you know, as life goes on, you kind of, as a kid, you kind of, come to accept and get used to this shocking reality that work is coming and um, that it's relentless. But as a Christian, the Bible describes work differently. The Bible says that we're created to do good works and that work is a gift from God that gives us fulfillment and purpose, pleasure, happiness, satisfaction and um, in life and that we can glorify God with our work. So today I want to give you a bit of a theology of what the Bible says about work. You know, I think the best place to start is Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 10, which is a great verse to memorize. I want to encourage you to learn it if you can. It sums up the whole gospel message. Let me read it for you. It says in verse 8, For it is by grace you've been saved through faith, and that is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This tells us that we don't get to heaven because of the good things that we do. But once we've given our hearts to Jesus and accepted his free gift of love for us, that we get inspired to want to please him and he gives us a purpose. And so once you've given your heart to Jesus, you've made him king and savior of your life, he says, follow me. I've got something for you to do with your life. I've got good works that I've prepared in advance for you to do. You know, another, I think that's a great place to begin, but another great scripture that comes to mind is the Ten Commandments itself. The Ten Commandments tell us six days you should labor and do your work, and the seventh is the Sabbath for rest. We often focus on the rest, but let's not ignore the first bit, which says, We've got six days of work that we're meant to do in our life. And right at this point, if you're thinking, boy, I am so exhausted and I'm feeling burned out. I don't want to hear today that I'm supposed to work. I'm trying to not to work. It's the Sabbath. It's my day of rest. I've got too much on. I just want to resonate with you. I just came off the back of having four weeks of long service leave because I needed a break. And I know what it's like to feel burned out and sick of work. And today, some of us probably need a bit of a spiritual kick in the pants to get out and do some work. But others, we're probably doing work in a way that is making us over exhausted, over tired. We're doing it wrong. That work is not the blessing that God intended it to be. And I want to encourage wherever you're at on your journey to have a heart that's open to seeing how God can inspire you to move forward in a way that work is going to be a blessing and a joy in your life. And my prayer for you today is if you're over work, if you're exhausted, that God will take you to a place where work is going to be something that brings you joy, satisfaction, fulfillment, and purpose, the way that God intended for it to do that. So, you know, if you're one of those people who need some encouragement to do some work, take those words. Here's another one, a famous one from Proverbs 6. It says, go to the ant, you sluggard, consider its ways and be wise. Um, it has no ruler or commander, but it stores its provisions in the summer and it gathers food at harvest time. This is a classic Bible verse I remember from a, being a kid, um, realizing, oh, it was supposed to work. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When, you get up, when will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. You know, like I said, I think most of us, we're working too hard 
And this is not the message for us today, but some of us, maybe that's what you need to hear. And kids, I'm talking to you. Did you know that God loves it when you help around the house? And I'm not just making this up. In fact, I want to read it to you from um, Desire of Ages. It's a beautiful little rendition of it here that I want to encourage you to get your hands on. And it says how when Jesus was a child, what he was like. And there's a little chapter on it there. And I believe God's given Ellen White inspiration to, to see these things. And I want to read this to you. It says, Jesus, um, when he was growing up, he was a willing servant, a loving and obedient son. And with his own hands, he worked in the carpenter's workshop with Joseph. He didn't use divine power to ease his burdens or lighten his work. And it says here, God approve, God's approval rests on children and youth who take part in the duties of the home, sharing the burdens of mum and dad. And it says, Jesus didn't avoid care and responsibility as many who claim to be his followers do. Um, they're seeking to get out of discipline and it leaves them feeling weak, inefficient and useless when difficulties come. And through work, we develop a positive attitude and strength of character that Christ revealed. You know, kids, when mum and dad ask you to do a job, it doesn't sound like fun, but I want you to realize that that is the beginnings of good character in your life. That's going to give you strength. And when difficult times come, you will know how to get through them because you've known what it's like to do something hard. And so I want to encourage you and I want to, you know, I'm proud of my girls who are pushing through and they're learning to help around the house and they make a huge difference. And I know that your parents will be so thankful to you for the different things that you do around the house. And I want to say well done for those things and keep it up because that's building good godly character. Now I want to move from that and talk to you about what about if work is supposed to be so good for us, why is it leaving some of us so tired, exhausted and run down? Now, for some of us, it may be just a, as simple as that we're just doing too much. We've forgotten to say no and we don't have balance anymore and we need to bring that back in. But for some of us, it's more than that. I want to share another thought um, with you from the teachings of Jesus. Jesus said these words. He said, um, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And he says, take my yoke upon you. And he says, because, and you'll get, re it's easy and light and you'll get rest for your souls. Now, this is an interesting teaching because he says, take my yoke upon you. Now that's um, a wooden thing that you put over your shoulders or an animal will wear to pull a load. But he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God is teaching us the principles of how to have work in a way that's satisfying and enjoyable and how it's supposed to be. And God is wanting to take out of our lives things that are making us burdened and holding us down. I want to just share a little thought here. And this is again from Desire of Ages. It says, what's making us so tired? Many whose hearts are aching under a load of care have chosen the world's service and accepted its perplexities and its customs. And because of this, their life has become a burden. You know, I think for some of us, we are living the life the best way we know how. And we think we're doing things the best possible way. We think we're doing it God's way. But some of the cues and indicators of what we should be doing, we haven't picked up from God at all. We've just picked up from society. And society is giving us a load of burden that is sapping the joy and energy out of our life. What am I talking about? Well, it's society, not God's word, who constantly tells us you need more. You know that nice house you have? Well, it's not quite good enough. You need a bigger one. You know the great car you have? Well, that's good, but you won't really be happy until you have a better one. You know that job that you have? It's a great job, but shouldn't you be seeking to go up higher and have more power and authority. And so there's this constant messaging from the community that we live in to get more, to do more, to have more and be more. Now, some of those things are good, but at certain point, enough is enough. And what we're after, what we're chasing for isn't from God. It's not serving God. It's not serving really others or ourselves because it's outside of God's plan for us. We really need discernment to figure this out. Um, but I guess I want to encourage you today. Some of us need to have the wisdom 
to show some restraint and pull it back. In fact, Proverbs says it like this in Proverbs 23 and verse four, it says, don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. What's it saying? Sometimes enough is enough. And, you know, I was talking to um, the CEO from Adra in New Zealand a few years ago. He did some calculations. A lot of people say, when it comes to money, I just want to be comfortable. And he did some calculations and he said, well, to be comfortable would probably cost about $3 million in the ways that people sort of assume what's comfortable. And here's the thing, where do you draw the line in this world? Is it enough to have a half a million dollar house? What about a 1 million? Maybe I need a 2 million. At some point, enough's got to be enough. But if we're not careful, we'll get that million dollar house and we'll just want more and then more and more and more. And the Bible, God's word is saying, have wisdom to show restraint. Maybe God's given you a great gift for business and multiplying wealth. And I guess part of the joy in life is to make sure that you're using that gift for him and not just for yourself. You know, a great article that someone sent me recently is from the Desiring God website. And I want to encourage you to check it out. This article is called Secret Pride Makes a Man Fragile. And it talks about how in life, sometimes we can have dreams that are for God and we hope to do something great for God. But if we analyze it and look at deep what's motivating us, it's actually not really for God. It's for ourselves. And we get exhausted because it's not satisfying what we wanted for ourselves. because that goal was not really the right goal in the first place. And um, the author uses the example of Baruch. Baruch was Jeremiah's scribe. And they were both serving God at a very difficult time. Israel was destroyed and um, Jerusalem was getting attacked by Babylon. And Baruch wanted to be someone great. And he wanted to serve God and do what was right. And he was hoping in doing so, he would be popular and important and powerful and respected. But instead, because his message, they they were rejecting God, they rejected Baruch's message. And God rebuked Baruch and said in Jeremiah 45 verse 5, do you seek great things for yourself? And he says, seek them not. What's this message to you and me today? It's possible that some of the things that we are striving for that are wearing us out aren't really the great things that we are hoping that they are. Uh, They're really for our own selfish desires and not for the glory of God. Um, The author here says, be about the master's business. His alone is a worthy cause for your life. Do you want to make a difference? Don't seek great things for yourself. Seek great things for Christ. And when we get off of the track that says, I've got to build up me and get onto the track of, I've got to build up Christ, a weight comes off of our shoulders, a freedom, a release. And when we start doing things to build up Christ, his energy flows into us. You know, there's that famous Bible verse that says, when we give up our own life, God blesses us. It's in Mark chapter 8, verse 35. He says, whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me in the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose their soul? And what could you give in exchange for your soul? What's he saying here? Jesus is saying that the way of following him means giving up, chasing after things for yourself and chase after things for him. Now, money might not be the thing for you, but you might have something else subtly pushing you forward in life that you're really chasing for. Whether it's um, a good thing or not, it can become a bad thing if it eclipses putting Christ first place in your life. I want to encourage you to take some time to think and say, God, am I getting exhausted because I'm chasing a goal that's really about me then instead of about you? Because that's one of the things that make us us exhausted in life. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 37 verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And so when we surrender our will and our plans and put God's first, then he gives us what we're hungry for. I'm going to give you four quick practical solutions for dealing with work that's making us tired and bringing out the joy in work instead. All right, here's the first one. 
When we get exhausted and tired out, we should use God's methods for rest instead of our own band-aids that don't really heal and refresh. What am I talking about? Well, I know from my own experience, in the last few months before I took some time off, I was stopping doing all the good things that I knew I ought to be doing. I stopped exercising. um, I stopped getting up early and spending time with God. And instead, I was replacing it with working hard through the day, can't wait to get home, finish my jobs for the day so I can relax in front of the TV with a pile of ice cream. Now, there's a time and a place for TV and ice cream. But I was finding that that was what I was starting to depend on. And the TV shows, I wanted to watch more of them and I was staying up later. And the ice cream also wanted more of that. And that was the pile of ice cream was getting bigger and not satisfying. And, you know, I needed a real break so I could do a reset and bring some of God's principles for healthy living back into my life. And I believe that God spoke to me and said, Ben, uh, why are you going to these other things for help instead of for me? And, I, you know, I kind of feel like stupid about that, that I'd be kind of using TV and ice cream for something that God is meant to be doing in my life, to, to take care of my pain, to take care of my tiredness. And he's got ways of doing that. It, it includes prayer. It includes spending time reading his word. But it's more than that. It also includes all his principles for health, like the New START uh, acronym that we teach as a church, you know, eating right, exercising, faith in God, getting some sunshine, some sleep, some fresh air, having a balance. And I'm looking forward to Emma uh, sharing in a few weeks on, on how health is connected to our spirituality. It's so important to take God's principles into place instead of going to the other things. Some of us, when we're tired and exhausted from work, we have just go to overeating, overwatching, over social mediaing, over complaining to a friend, over stimulating in different ways that might not be good for us, over achieving or overworking, trying to drown out our stressed out mind and anxious thoughts. Instead, God's calling us, try my ways. And um, sometimes you might need to do what I did and have a, have a restart where you say, take some time off to get those good principles back into your life. So number one, use God's methods for rest instead of band-aids that don't really fix the problem. Number two, let go of goals that aren't from God. This is what we were talking about before. You might be actually happier with less, less money, less power, less prestige, less success, less popularity. It might sound ridiculous, but for some of us, God's plan is not about greater and greater in all every area of those things. He might, we might find our greatest joy in following a different path. And if you think about it and you believe God's convicting you to scale it back in your ambitions in certain areas that are exhausting you, make that change. Stop trying to be something that God never made you to be and embrace what he has called you to be and feel the energy that he'll give you flow into that calling. Number three, I want to encourage you to learn to enjoy the joy of work. I told you before about Jesus as a child. And when he was a kid growing up in the carpenter's shop, Ellen White, uh, through her inspiration, saw that he would work hard and he learned to enjoy it. He was not willing, she writes, to be deficient, even in handling tools. He was perfect as a workman, just as he was perfect in character. By example, he taught us to do our work with exactness and thoroughness and that labor is honorable. God gave us work as a blessing And only the diligent worker finds the true glory and joy of life. That's interesting. It's not saying that we have to be perfect to be happy, but it's saying learn to do your best at your work. It says God gave us work as a blessing and that diligent workers find the true glory and joy of life. Now, there's a bunch of scriptures in Ecclesiastes that say exactly this, that when you get tired at the end of the day, there's a good tiredness, a satisfied tiredness, where you feel a sense of accomplishment. And God wants us to finish a good day's work of either earning money or um, cleaning the house, looking after children, volunteering in our community, serving in the church, sharing the gospel with others, whatever the good work is that God's called you to, do your best at it. Do it to the glory of God and enjoy the satisfaction of doing something great that matters, that makes a difference. And that brings me to the fourth and final tip for making work what it should be. Determine to work for God rather than for yourself or anyone else. 
Here it is in Colossians 3 and verse 23 and 24. A great scripture. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. It is the Lord Christ you're serving. You know, whether you're at home struggling with kids, whether you're at um, retirement age and you're volunteering or serving by helping others, whether you're in the middle of life and you're balancing a career as well as serving in church and helping in the community, helping at school, um, whatever you do, the Bible's calling you to do it to the glory of God. And as we shift our priority to lifting up Christ and serving him, his Holy Spirit will empower what we do. He'll lift us up and we'll have the joy and satisfaction of finding our purpose in God. I want to finish with one last thought. And it comes from the life of the disciples when Jesus called them to follow him. And it says how they were uneducated, regular people. And it said, in the common walks of life, many people are patiently going about their daily work unconscious that they possess powers that, if called to action, would raise them to equality with the world's most honoured leaders. They need the touch of a skilled hand to awaken those dormant abilities. And these are the kind of people that Jesus called to be his co-laborers. You know, some of the more mundane things that you're involved with, that you think, what's the point of all of this? It's a Mr. Miyagi moment. And Jesus, God is training you, wax on, wax off. And it seems dull and boring, but if you're surrendered to Christ at the right time, he'll call you into his service and the, the character and the skills that you've been learning in good, honest work, God will use to, for something very important for his work and it'll bring him great glory. I want you to be encouraged by the Mr. Miyagi truth of Jesus training through honest work. You know, I want to pray for each one of you right now. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Dear God in heaven, some of us today, we need some encouragement to get out and do something. And there's a lot of fulfillment and satisfaction and spiritual health and mental and emotional health that we'll get from getting more engaged in life. We just need to know what to do. So please guide us so that we'll put our energy into the right thing. Others of us need to have a break. We're doing too much or too much of one thing and not enough of another. And I pray that you'd help us to have the wisdom to get that balance right. Some of us are doing something and we think it's for you, but if we're honest, it might really be about ourselves in our own kingdom. Lord, I pray that you'd touch our hearts and help us to let go of goals that are wearing us out, that really aren't gonna help us, that aren't for you, and that aren't in the end gonna bless us either. Help us to get on board with your plans for our life, whatever they are. Lord, help us to see your goodness in the Mr. Miyagi moments of life. And I pray that you would help us to um, do our best, be diligent with our work and go to sleep each night, tired but satisfied and looking forward to another day of good work. Bring the joy back into our work, I pray. Lord, those of us who need a special time of refreshing and a reset and a break, I pray that you'd open up a way so that we can have that too, Lord, and move forward uh, with your blessing and your purpose and plans in place for our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to say thank you for joining us for church today. And I um, want to encourage you to connect with a friend from church that you haven't connected with for a while and have a great Sabbath. God bless you.